um, what I decided to do was do a mixture of paper one and paper two work. Um, so trigonometry is a really, really big part of paper two. So last time we focused on general trig and we were practicing our reduction formulae and um, ratios in terms of a letter and that kind of stuff. So today we're going to talk a bit about identities and about general solutions, because we know that these are the sorts of questions that always come up. So when you are doing identities and general solutions, you obviously need to know your compound angle formulae and your double angle formulae. But the other things that are super important to you are the identities that you learned in grade 11. All right, now those are not on your formula sheet. So the compound angles and the double angles are on your formula sheet, but your grade 11 identities are not. And these you are expected to know um, and be able to use in grade 12 as well. So I just wanted to revise that before we get started. The first one I wanted to talk about is the tan identity. So in other words, tan theta. So tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So whenever we're working with identities and general solutions, we would normally rewrite tan theta as sine theta over cos theta. Um, I would also just like to mention that if they give you tan squared theta, then you would write that as sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And one more thing, if they give you something like tan 2 theta, then that could be written as sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. So you yeah, be very careful between the difference between a square and a double angle. Uh, they're both obviously written with a 2, but the one is an exponent and the other one is not. So just be careful about how you how you write that. So that was the first one. And then the other identity that we need to know from grade 11 is our square identity. And our square identity is this one. So in other words, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. All right, that's our square identity. Sometimes they expect us to be able to um, manipulate this further. I'm going to explain now what I mean by that. Um, so, and, and it works both ways. So, you know, you can write one as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, and you can write sine squared theta plus cos squared theta as one as well. All right, so you, you need to be able to go from the one to the other. Um, but when I was saying, you know, you can manipulate it a little bit further, if you wanted to make cos squared theta the subject of the formula, then you could take sine squared theta over to the other side and remember to change its sign. Then what we have on the right hand side here can also be factorized. Right, so we can factorize this by difference of two squares. I'm just gonna move that down a little bit. And sometimes you need to do this, sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. It just, it just really depends on what the question is asking for. But if need be, you could go and you could factorize this by difference of two squares. So one bracket would be plus, and the other bracket would have a minus in it. Okay, and you could do the same thing with sine squared theta, okay, where you could make that the subject of the formula, and then that would be equal to one minus cos squared theta, and then you could factorize that further as well. Okay, so just don't forget about those because they do come up and we do use them. All right, as well in metric maths. Okay, so the first thing that I would like to do <clears throat> this evening is proving an identity with you. Okay, so when we are asked to prove an identity, it's normally about five or six marks. So it's quite a lot of marks. And when we are proving an identity, we are not solving an equation. Um, so because you're not solving an equation, you cannot move terms from one side to the other. That's not allowed. What you are expected to do, proving an identity means working with the left-hand side and manipulating it, obviously correctly, mathematically speaking, manipulating it so that it equals the right-hand side. Okay, so you are allowed to work with the left-hand side. And in some cases, you have to work with the right-hand side, but you don't work with them together. Okay, so you've got to treat each one like a separate sum. 
And sometimes you're going to work with the left hand side and with the right hand side and simplify both of them and then conclude that the left and, and the right are equal. Uh, but most of the time we, we just work with the left hand side and conclude that it's equal to the right. Okay, so in other words, what's important here is the how not what the answer is. I mean, in, in most cases in maths, the answer really isn't important. It's just worth one mark. It's how we got to the answer that really matters. So here, these five marks are all based on your method and how you manipulated the left-hand side in order to be able to get to the right-hand side. <coughs> Let me just move this down as well. It's just a little bit high up. Um, and the first thing that we notice when we are working with question 5.3. Uh, hang on, Nick, you said, ma'am. Sometimes, I mean, Nick, I've, I've done questions out of the textbook that I use in class every day where there's one or two um, where you would need to work with both. Not very often. Um, but that, that does happen, but it's just really important to note that, you know, you must work with the left and the right separately to one another. So when you write it down, when you start the process of um, solving your identity or proving your identity, you're always going to start off by writing left hand side equals or right hand side equals. So let's do that. So one over cos theta minus cos theta over one plus sine theta. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? Um, what are we working with? I mean, I know we're working with trig, but these trigonometric expressions, what are they in the form of? Can anybody tell me? <clears throat> yes, we need to, we need to not find tan, but we need to prove that it equals tan. Um, <clears throat> there might be identities here, but they're hiding at the moment. What I was trying to get at here is that they've given us fractions. Okay, that's what they've given us. They've given us exactly, all right, Nick. Okay, they've given us fractions. So whoever would have thought, but when we're working with trig and exponents as well, you have to be able to work with fractions, okay? So now when it comes to working with fractions, we need to know the rules about what we do when we add or subtract, because we've got a subtraction sign here, haven't we? So what are the rules when we add or subtract fractions? What do we have to have? What do we need? That's it. Okay, we need a lowest common denominator. All right, quite right. Okay, so we need a lowest common denominator. Oopsie, denominator. All right, so <clears throat> just very quickly, because it's exactly the same process, right? If I said to you guys, um, seven out of 15 minus one out of three, I'll tell you what, let's not make it out of 15. Let's do this wrong. Okay, let's say, let's say four out of five minus one out of three, All right? How would you do that question? I know it's very simplistic, but it works on exactly the same principles. What would we do here? We'd look at the, exactly. So we would look at the denominators first, quite right, Nick. So we'd look at the five and we'd look at the three. And then we'd think about our times tables, wouldn't we? And we'd say to ourselves, well, what number can five and three both go into, right? And a lot of the time we end up multiplying the two numbers together. And in this case, we would say, okay, well, five and three would both go into 
15. So 15 would be our lowest common denominator. And then what we would do is we would make these fractions equivalent fractions out of 15. So we would multiply 5 by 3 to get 15. And whatever we did to the denominator, we would have to do the same thing to the numerator, wouldn't we? We'd have to multiply the top by 3 as well. And on this side over here, <clears throat> we'd have to multiply that by 5 to get 15. So we would do the same thing over there. All right. And then once we had made them into equivalent fractions out of 15, the next step is we keep our denominator and we subtract the numerators, don't we? So we actually end up saying 12 minus 5. All right. And in this particular case here, that would leave us with 7 out of 15. And that would be our answer, wouldn't it? It is exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing, except here, we've also got to be careful about identities, fair enough, that we can use. But in terms of our getting started, we're going to look at the denominators and we're going to say to ourselves, what is the lowest common denominator of these two? Well, because they've got trigonometric expressions in them, we have to multiply them together. All right, so the product of these two is our lowest common denominator. So in other words, cos theta times one plus sine theta, okay? So we're multiplying one over cos theta with one plus sine theta, aren't we? So what we do to the bottom, we've got to do to the top. So we've got to multiply by one plus sine theta at the top. And on this side over here, we have multiplied this by cos theta. So we've got to do the same thing at the top over here. We've got to multiply that by cos theta as well. Okay, so we've got one times, one times one plus sine theta minus cos theta times cos theta. So this is just normal distribution. Obviously, when we multiply something by one, it doesn't change. So that's going to leave us with one plus sine theta minus cos theta times cos theta is cos squared theta. And of course, we don't drop our denominator. We're going to keep our denominator, which is cos theta times one plus sine theta. Now, <clears throat> we are not allowed to cancel over plus and minus signs, all right? So when they want us to manipulate something or simplify something in maths, <clears throat> and there are plus and minus signs, it, it's an instruction to us that we have to factorize, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, whoopsie, is I'm just gonna rub this out. And I just want to talk a little bit about why, I mean, we all know we can't cancel over plus and minus signs, but yet it seems to be something that we all do regularly. Okay, so look at it like this. If I've got two plus three over two plus five, and I come along and I say to myself, now this is incorrect, I'm going to cancel out my twos. I'm saying that the answer is three over five, which it isn't. If I did this another way, which was to add the numerators together, that would be actually the correct way to do it, would be to add the numerators together and the denominators together. I'm essentially saying that five sevenths and three fifths are the same, and they're not. Okay, so it does not work. You do not have a true statement when you cancel over plus and minus signs. You cannot cancel terms. Okay, so you cannot cancel terms. Okay, remember terms and maths are separated by plus and minus signs. Okay, so you cannot cancel terms. You have to factorize. All right, now compare that to this, two times three over two times five. 
Okay, now if I choose to do it this way where I cancel first, I can say my answer is three over five, which is true. Or if I want to do it the long route, I can say my answer is two times three, which is six, over two times five, which is 10. But if I divide both numerator and denominator by the same thing, in this case two, I'm gonna get this answer. If I divide that by two, I'm gonna get my five. Okay, so that's why you are allowed to cancel factors, but you are not allowed to cancel terms. So when you see pluses and minuses, like we do in the numerator over here, we have to factorize if we want to try and cancel down. We cannot cancel sine theta at the top with sine theta at the bottom. Okay, so we have to try and factorize. Now, there's a couple of things that we could do here um, if we're looking at the numerator. Um, I don't want to tell you what you think you should do, but I'd like some ideas from you guys. What do you think we could do to the numerator in order to be able to manipulate it so that we can factorize? Because as it stands at the moment, that you can't factorize that. There's no highest common factor. It's not a trinomial. Uh, it's not difference of squares. So we've got to do something to it before we can start to factorize it. What are your ideas? What can we do to it before we factorize? <clears throat> to what, Aratile? Okay, so it's a piece of says make one become cos theta and sine two theta. Aratile says change cos squared theta to one minus um, sine squared of x, perfect. I think in fact, in this case, both of those things would work, all right? Both, both would work. Um, I'm gonna go with one plus sine theta, whoopsie, minus, and I'm gonna change cos squared theta, let's just make that a little bit bigger, minus, and then here, one minus sine squared theta all over my device in, there we go, all over cos theta times one plus sine theta. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can remove our brackets. Let's just see what you guys are saying in the chat. Okay, that's fine. Good suggestions, everyone. And now we've got one plus sine theta minus one plus sine squared theta all over cos theta times one plus sine theta. So now in the numerator, the one minus one goes away. And that leaves us with, I'm bringing this to the front, sine squared theta plus sine theta. And this, gosh, I can't believe how quickly we run out of space. I always think I've given myself more than enough room and I never do. Okay, so now we've got sine squared theta plus sine theta all over cos theta times one plus sine theta. So what are we going to do to the numerator now? So we applied an identity that's allowed us to change what we have. And now we can exactly take out a common factor. Well done. Okay, so in this case, we are going to take out sine theta. All right, we would be left with sine theta plus one. Okay, absolutely. There we go. Well done, everybody. And at the bottom, we would leave it as it is, cos theta, one plus sine theta. And now I can cancel down. Okay, so I'm allowed to cancel something at the top with something at the bottom. And the whole bracket and the whole bracket one divided by itself will leave us with one. And there we go. That's how we've got our tan theta because now we've got sine theta over cos theta.
and that is indeed equal to tan theta and therefore the right hand side. Okay, so that is the idea, that's the process that we're supposed to follow. So when we get to a point where we kind of get stuck because we can't factorize, we need to think about applying an identity, okay? So it could be a compound angle identity, it could be a double angle identity, it could be the square identity, it could be the tan identity. We've got to think of one of those, all right? Um, <clears throat> and try and figure out what it is that we're supposed to do. Okay, so that's an example on how we would prove uh, that identity. I'm going to give you guys one to try now. Um, the one that I'm going to give you to try is a little bit more difficult than this one. And then we can come back and we can talk about the general solution. Okay, so sorry for the late joiners, it was one over cos theta minus cos theta over one plus sine theta. Okay. Uh, let's just see, sorry, someone said something in the chat. Uh, Kutluano, um, the, these ones up here, the compound angle formulae and your double angle formulae are on your formula sheet, but your tan identity and your square identity are not. So those you need to know by heart. Okay, so yeah, and they do, they do get used. Um, often in matric, we're so busy looking for compound angles and double angles that we forget about the square identity or um, the tan identity from grade 11. And they're very important because they, they do come up as well. Okay, so yes, make sure that you've, you've uh, learned those. Abdullah, what do you mean? Can you see where the formulas are changed from? What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, Abdullah will deal with that now. What I'm going to do is I just want to give you guys an opportunity to try something on your own. Okay, so here is an identity for you to try. And I'll just bring this down. I don't know if you're going to need it, but I'll just put it there as well. And I'm not putting the tan identity and the square identity because those you need to know. Okay, so give this a try and then we'll mark it and we'll move on.
Okay, so if and when you think you've done it, then you can just say done in the chat. And then at least Nalisa and I have got an idea of sort of how far you are. piece so well done Cool, well done, Nick. I don't know if the fast finishers want to try that one just while we're waiting for everybody. Okay, so Nick at Sepiso can just, just so that we give a few people a chance. Okay, no problem. Well done, Mafa. Well done, Sepang. Okay, well done, Timna. That's lovely. So there's another one for you to try in the meantime. Well done, Puti. Another one here for you that you can try in the meantime. <clears throat> While we're waiting for everybody to be done, good. Cool, that's great. Well done, everyone. Okay, so for everybody that's finished 5.4, the fast finishes, you can try 5.2 in the meantime. If you're still working on 5.4, don't worry about 5.2. It's just to keep the others going. Just make sure you can do this and we'll go through it <clears throat> when we've had a few more duns. Cool. Okay, all right, Sisanda. <laughs> Perfect. <clears throat> then let's go through it. Okay, we shall not delay. <laughs> all right, so let me just move this and that one out the way. Just move these down. I'll just delete that because it's a bit of a Pain in the bum. There, okay. All right, so here we go. So, Sasanda, what was the first thing that you did with this question? Hmm. 
What's the first thing that you did, Sasanda? Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that one now, Nick. So I don't know about everybody else, but when I look at these, I always look to see how many terms I've got. So what I can see here is I've got one term and then here I've got another term. So I've got two terms up at the top. At the bottom, I've got three terms. All right, so if I've got terms, it means I'm going to need to factorize at some stage. Are there any identities that I can apply off the bat? Okay, cool, so Sander, absolutely right. So I would have done the same thing. I'm gonna write sine theta minus, and then over here, I'm gonna write tan theta as sine theta over cos theta. And it really helps to write the cos squared theta, in my opinion, nicely in the numerator like that so that you can see what's at the top and what's at the bottom, okay? Because we've got a fraction within a fraction here. Now we've got the divide line. And then again, at the bottom, we've got cos theta minus one plus sine squared theta. So I think you could probably write the one as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, or you could use your square identity and write sine squared theta as one minus cos squared theta. So I think that's what I'm gonna try here. So cos theta minus one plus, and then here we're gonna write this as one minus cos squared theta. Okay. Um, what is All right, well, let's just see what happens. Maybe it's better if we write it as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Mm, I think that might actually be better in this case. Hang on a moment. I'm just going to go back and go and have a look at that. Uh, so what I'm saying here is instead of writing that like that, is here, write the minus one. So as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Okay, <clears throat> let's give that a go and see what happens. So here in the numerator, I can see I'm multiplying on this side over here. Within this term, I'm multiplying. So I'm allowed to cancel something at the bottom with something at the top, okay? So cos theta goes into cos squared theta, cos theta number of times. So at the top, I'm now left with sine theta, minus sine theta times cos theta, which I know I can factorize by taking out a highest common factor of sine theta. At the bottom, I'm gonna remove the brackets and that's gonna leave us with cos theta minus sine squared theta minus cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Obviously, minus sine squared theta plus sine squared theta will add up to zero. Okay, so at the top, we've got sine theta minus sine theta times cos theta. At the bottom, we are left with cos theta minus cos squared theta. Okay, and now at the top, we can factorize. We can take out sine theta. That leaves us with one minus cos theta. Same thing at the bottom. We can take out a highest common factor of cos theta. That leaves us with one minus cos theta. And again, now that we have factorized, we are allowed to cancel our factors. This leaves us with sine theta over cos theta, which is indeed tan theta as well. Okay, how did that go? Did that go well for everybody? Is it a thumbs up? How are we feeling right now about this question? Good. Oh, that's nice to see. Okay. All right. Lovely, everyone. Good. Okay. So remember, it's not the answer that's important in this case, 
we are starting by we know the answer before we start so it's how we get to the answer all right so we have to use correct mathematical okay so Lissedi, the idea behind these sorts of questions is let's just put a little summary on the side over here so Okay, so <clears throat> you, you need to use your identities. Okay, so in other words, if you see um, sine two theta, you know, you're going to end up writing that as two sine theta cos theta, for example, or if you see um, tan theta, you must write that as sine theta over cos theta, right? The second thing is, is when you have terms, bear in mind that you need to factorize, right? But you often have to apply an identity before you're able to factorize. Okay, so the sorts of factorizing that you might have to worry about, highest common factor, trinomials, sometimes difference of two squares. The other thing that you have to be aware of is what happens with fractions. Okay, so are you multiplying fractions? Are you adding or subtracting? Um, so the different operations with fractions. Okay, so you've got to be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide. Okay, so yeah, those are just some strategies that you can use when you look at these sorts of questions. Okay. Okay, so Susanda, I lost you. Okay, hang on. So Lucidi is asking a question in Sasanda. Okay, so the third part. One, two. Okay, so Sasanda, I'll just take your question. For you saying that I lost you in the third bit. Now the third bit is this one over here. Is that correct? Is that where I lost you? What do you not understand? Sure, Nick. No problem. So, Sasanda, once we got to this third step over here, we were just factorizing. Anyway, if you can tell me what confused you. Okay, so Sasanda, when we got to the step over here, we've got our sine theta here, there's our sine theta there, okay? And then minus our cos theta here, minus sine theta, cos theta over there. Then remember, up at the top here, we had rewritten one, okay? So this one over here, this one, I've rewritten that as sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. And when you've got a negative in front of a bracket, it changes the signs of the terms inside, doesn't it? Okay, so out of these four terms that are in the denominator here, minus sine squared theta plus sine squared theta adds up to zero. So the only two terms that are left are the cos theta and the minus cos squared theta. Okay, so here you go, the cos theta and the minus cos squared theta. Right, so in the top, you can take out sine theta as the highest common factor, okay, because it's in this term and it's in that term. And at the bottom, you can take out cos theta. Whoopsie, that wasn't very nice. Uh, that looks horrible, doesn't it? I don't even see what's going on there. Okay, well, that was a cos theta. Um, so you're going to take cos theta out as a highest common factor at the bottom as well, and then you can cancel your brackets. Okay. All right. Now, Lizette, you also said, uh, I understand, ma'am, but for in the case you did not change cos. Uh, 
you know, Lucidi, it's actually a, hor a horrible thing for me to have to answer because, you know, the more you do these and the more experienced you become, the easier it becomes for you to figure out what it is that you're supposed to do. So it's, it's kind of like when you learn how to drive a car, you know, after you've been driving a car for such a long time, you don't have to think about putting the car into gear and checking your, you know, you do these things sort of automatically. And it's almost like that now um, with, with this sort of thing. But I think what you need is the ability to think things through before you get started. So with this one over here, I thought, well, if I change um, this sine squared theta at the end to one minus cos squared theta, then I thought I thought it could end up with this being a trinomial. Um, it didn't end up being a trinomial, and I just wanted to avoid having a negative in front of my square term. So that's why I decided to write um, one as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. I don't think it would have mattered in this case whether we had changed the one or whether we had changed the sine squared theta to one minus cos squared theta. I think both of those things would have worked in this case. As far as tan theta is concerned, always change tan theta. So every time you see tan theta or tan two theta, you're going to write it as sine theta over cos theta. Okay, so that, that, is, a, that is a general rule. Okay, I, I hope that helps. Oh, do you want me to redo it? Okay, all right, Naledi, let's just do that quickly. No problem. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's just go down here. Let's just pop it there. And let's try it the other way. Absolutely. OK, so now we've got uh, sine theta minus sine theta over cos theta. And again, how you set these out is so important. OK, so that you can clearly see what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator of each fraction. And now we're going to say cos theta minus 1 plus, and then here we're going to say 1 minus cos squared theta. OK, and as we had said previously, cos theta will go to itself once and into cos squared theta, cos theta number of times. That means in our next line in the numerator, we're going to end up with sine theta minus sine theta times cos theta all over cos theta minus 1 plus 1 minus cos squared theta. You see both work. OK, so we can see we're back in the same place where we've got the sine theta minus sine theta times cos theta. And at the bottom, our cos theta minus cos squared theta. All right, and then we would just do what we had done before, all right, where we would need to go and factorize, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so we would have taken out the sine theta at the top. We would have taken out the cos theta at the bottom cancelled down and ended up with the same thing, sine theta over cos theta, which gives us tan theta. So yeah, it's, it's a very difficult thing to explain because there are some times where you'll change something and it works, and then you'll change it in another situation and it doesn't work. Um, so, you know, you've got to sort of be, you've got to be flexible. Um, it's like trying to find your way through a maze. You know, so if you're walking through the maze and you get to a point where you get stuck, you kind of have to retrace your steps back to, you know, where you made your wrong turn and then try something different. All right. And it's the same with these. You know, you have to sort of go back to where you where you made your wrong turn um, and try and think, well, what else could I do in this situation? Is there a different identity that I could apply or a different way for me to think about this problem? Okay. All right. So Nick, you were super excited to talk about this particular question. Let's just put this over here. That was this one. So what did you do here, Nick?
I think what I would have done here, I want to see what you, you change sign. Okay, so in other words, so the sine squared theta over here, this sine squared theta over here, Nick says he changed that to one minus cos squared theta. All right, I agree. I would have done that as well. So we're going to leave the minus two on the outside. And in place of sine squared x, we're going to write one minus cos squared x plus cos x. And what did you do with the one? Did you do anything with it? Or did you just leave it as one? I'll tell you what, I'll leave it as one for now. You left it. Okay, all right, fine. Then at the bottom, we've got one minus cos 540 minus x. So what did you do with that 540? Oh, excuse me. Aha. Okay, so you subtracted 360. All right, lovely. So if we take 540 and we take away 360, that leaves us with 180. Okay, and we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to subtract um, 360 or multiples of 360. And we're allowed to add 360 and multiples of 360. So I quite agree. Here we would have ended up with cos 180 minus x. So now we've got a reduction formula involved as well. Okay, so now up at the top, we're going to distribute, okay, minus two times one is minus two, minus two times cos squared theta is going to be plus two cos squared x, sorry, not cos theta, plus cos x plus one, all over one minus, and cos 180 minus x, 180 minus x is quadrant number, two isn't it okay and cos x is negative in quadrant two so this is going to reduce to negative cos x like so all right so what did you do after this nick why can't cos be negative and also unmute yourself yeah you're welcome to unmute yourselves guys Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so what's going on at the top here, Nick? What have we got? We've got our squared term first. So 2 cos squared x. We'll put cos x in the middle. Minus 2 plus 1 means we've now got minus 1. All right, at the bottom... We've got one plus cos x. Okay, so again, can you see guys how it's a case of applying an identity? That's what we were doing over here. We applied an identity, all right? After removing brackets and collecting terms, now we're in a situation where we're going to need to factorize. Okay, here again, we had to apply a reduction formula and now, there's nothing that we can do with this denominator. We just have to factorize the numerator and see where we go from there. Okay, so now factorizing the numerator, what is that that we've got there in the numerator? Can we take out a highest common factor? Ah, there we go. Okay, Lacedi says open two brackets. Good. Open two brackets. I quite agree, Lissetti. All right. And in one bracket, we're going to have 2 cos x. And in the other bracket, we're going to have cos x. And we've got to have one here and one here. And now we have to decide exactly can you say it's a trinomial? Good job. All right. So are they both pluses? Are they both minuses? Is one plus, one minus? If so, which one? What are we going to do here with signs? What goes into the first bracket? Is it a plus or a minus in the first bracket? Both plus, Nick says. Okay, but if they're both plus, how do we get the minus at the top here, Nick? 
Okay, because a positive times a positive is not a negative. So we've just got to be careful of that when we factorize. It's okay. So Kanisa says the plus goes in the first bracket. Okay, why Kanisa? Uh, what do you mean, Boitumelo? 2 cos squared x is negative 1. Okay, they can't both be negative because a negative times a negative is not a negative. So if the last term of your trinomial is a negative, one bracket has to be plus and the other one has to be minus. Okay, let's just have a look. So minus in the first bracket, so Tsipang says minus plus, minus in the first bracket. Ah, I quite agree. Okay, so the minus has to be here and the plus has to be there. Okay, and you can check this very carefully by doing FOIL, okay, the opposite, all right? So in other words, 2 cos x times cos x gives us our 2 cos squared x. To get our middle term, it's the O and the I from FOIL. So it's 2 cos x times positive 1, which is 2 cos x, minus 1 cos x leaves us with plus 1 cos x in the middle. And then negative 1 times positive 1 leaves us with negative 1. Okay, so always check your, find your trinomials. Okay, so always check your factorizing. of trinomials, okay, by just <clears throat> foiling it out again. Okay, and then you can see that you've got it correct. At the bottom, we've got one plus cos x, which is also in brackets. And now we can see something at the top has to cancel with something at the bottom. Anything divided by itself is one. <clears throat> okay, and then this leaves us with 2 cos x minus 1, which is, I think, yes, indeed, that is what we had on the right-hand side. Okay, so hopefully we're all good. Are there any questions? Any questions, anybody? Do you want to ask something, Nick? How are we all feeling about this? Are we feeling good? Can you give Nelisa and I some emojis? We just see how you feel. Okay, um, cool. I have a note as well. Can I please run the, the poll? Please just. Sure. Okay, yeah. Please answer the poll quickly before we go. Okay, I think Nick is trying to show you the question in his camera. Okay. Oh, let me have a look. Let me just find Nick. I don't see Nick's window. Uh, let me try and... Yeah, I can't I can't see his window. Uh, unfortunately. Okay, ma'am. Can I tell you the question? Yes, of course. Okay, the question is one over um cos x plus one times cos x minus one. So one over cos x plus one minus. One. Uh, times cos x uh, minus one. 
is equals to negative one over 10 squared x times cos squared x. So hang on a second. So, so it was one over cos x plus one minus cos x? No, it was, one, it was one over cos x plus one times cos x minus one. Oh, so one times cos x minus one. Okay. Is equals to negative one over 10 squared x times cos squared x. 10 squared x times cos squared x. Yes. Okay, is that the question? Yes. Okay, all right. Let's see if we can quickly do this. All right, so we know that when we multiply anything by one, it's not going to change. So is this also an identity? No. No, ma'am, look, it's one over cos x times... Uh, uh, times so this is supposed to be a times? Uh, at the bottom, the denominator, ma'am, it's one over yes. cos x minus one times. So it's in the same, it's the same denominator, times cos. Oh, so um, it, okay, so in the same denominator now, times yes, cos yes. x minus one. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Oh. No, so the other one is plus one, plus one, and then the other one is minus one. So is one bracket plus one and the other one's minus yes, one? Yes, yes, Okay, all right. So this is plus one like that. And then is it and then are, are they, are they brackets one. like this? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, equals, and then here you've got negative one over yeah, 10, 10 squared, squared x. x times cos squared x. Is that right? Yes. yes oh, yes. okay. All right, now I'm with you. I'm with this you. This is the cross you. multiplication one, <laughs> Okay, so what was the instruction in this question? Was it simplify? Was it prove the it's identity? Prove, prove the identity. Okay, all right. So in other words, they want you to prove that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Right. Okay, so, so what I think I would do here is you might work with left and right simultaneously. On the left-hand side here, I think I would end up with cos squared x minus 1. Then, I'm, I'm look, I'm just thinking here and then you could take one minus cos squared x like that and then you could have one over negative sine squared x all right so that's the right hand side the left hand side on the right hand side i would write tan squared x as sine squared x over cos squared x then you're multiplying that by cos squared x. So something at the bottom with something at the top. And then mm -hmm. here you go, one over. And it doesn't matter where you put the negative. Yes, that's what I got. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. No, but that's quite right. So this is one of those situations where I'm really glad you showed us this question, Nick. Um, but this is one of those situations where, yeah, you've got to work with the left and you've got to work with the right. Well, thank yeah. you.